series. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. And Tatis takes a call strike and we get underway right on time. So Tatis leading off hitting 286. And he lines it down the left field line. And that's how this game gets started. Is Tatis is going to roll into second base with a leadoff double. Our game time weather is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. You can buy your ride wristbands online and save up to 20 bucks per person. 60 degrees, very brisk winds. So Walker right off the bat in trouble on the second pitch of the game and here's Soto and Tatis is going to go and Bailey's throw is not in time. Like David Villar is taking a peek at the Giants dugout encouraged him to take a look. He thought he might have had a chance to get him. And they're going to look. This is a huge play. Yeah, the, if not you lose your. They got him. He's out. That is an absolute strike from Patrick Bailey. Boy, is he put on a clinic or what? Uh, you know, it, it's it not just the, the pop time that it, it is so impressive for Patrick Bailey. It's the accuracy of his throws. And he got a little something on it. And it had to be perfect to get him. Now, uh, Tatis is watching it. So's Matt Williams. And I think they got a pretty good idea that it's going to be one out. I mean, this is a play, Mike. If you're trying to steal this base, you got to make it. You cannot make the first or the third out of third base. And really, when you think about it, with Tatisa's speed, I mean, you're already in scoring position at second base. But hey, look, to his credit, he had a pretty good jump. This is going to be a huge roar. After folks. review, the call on the field is overturned. The runner is out. San Francisco retains their challenge. Well, you just saw Tatis. You saw Soto take a pitch. Then it's Machado, Bogarts, and Cronenworth. Gary Sanchez will hit in the sixth slot. Then it's Odor, Kim, and Grisham. Right off the bat, within five minutes of this four-game series, excitement. Well, Ryan Walker, he's opening it up here to for the Giants. That's first his time that he's been asked to do this. But with John Brevia on the injured list, uh, they needed somebody else to do it. Now, Walker's done it a couple times down at the AAA level, and he's been good at it. Struck well to left, starting to carry, and gone. And it's 1 nothing. Home run number 12 on the year. Now I know it's only two hitters into this game, but both guys have hit off speed pitches. And with Ryan Walker, he's only got two pitches. He's got the slider and he's got the sinker. And watch the back leg. He's sitting. He's waiting for something soft and he's thinking the other way and he backspins it right over the wall. The only way you do that is if you're looking slow. And he got what he was looking for. Here's Manny Machado. And Machado takes a pitch that should have been a strike and it's one and oh. Now Adrian Johnson could be a good umpire even for pitchers but in the game he starts small. His zone will expand but early in a game. He's normally tight and he just took one away from the kid. Slowly hit and this should be a hit but it's not. They got him. Great play from Tyro Estrada and Ryan Walker. Let's take a look at the Giants defense brought to you by your Bay Area GMC dealer starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Conforto Matos and Yastrzemski. That's your outfield. Good arms across the board. Crawford VR on the left side Estrada and Wade Junior on the right side Patrick Bailey he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Here's Xander Bogarts. Bogarts hitting. 265 with seven home runs. He's got 24 runs batted in. Two balls and no strikes. 
I mean, this is such a difficult play just because of the throw you have to make. And an off balance throw, an absolute perfect strike. And Walker handles it well. I thought Machado would beat that out. I really did. I did too. Two and one to Bogarts. Three and one. Brian Walker, 27 years of age, former 31st round pick in 2018. <laughs> Rookie. Tight. Let's take a look at the Nissan keys to the game. Keep it rolling. The Giants are on a seven game winning streak. But more importantly, they took two series on the road, one in St. Louis and one in L.A. Keep it rolling. Next man up. The injury list has been filling up, and there was another addition today. Scott Alexander on the I.L. and Sean Jelly replaced him on the Giants roster. Here's Cronenworth. All right. I got a beef already with Adrian Johnson. Hey, it always starts off a very, very small zone, but it loosens up. Hit up the middle. Glove to glove. Side retired. Not an easy inning. Nice defense, and the Sofordo will hit in the cleanup spot. Then it's Yastrzemski, Matos, and Crawford. Patrick Bailey will hit eighth, and rounding out the lineup is David Villar. On the hill tonight for the Padres will be the right hander, Michael Walker, making his 14 starts. Really having a great first half. 7 2 with a 2 8 90 RA. And look at the innings pitched. He's got. 58 hits allowed in those 74 two thirds innings. League hitting 211 against him. And uh, the 31 year old in his 10th year at the big league level. Big fella, 6'6, 215 pounder. You'll see mid 90s fastballs, a two and four seam movement, a good changeup, good cutter. He's got a curveball and slider. And he will throw anything anytime. Lamont Wade. What? <laughs> You know, if you're going to be tight, you got to be tight both ways, Mr. Johnson. Nine home runs, 27 driven in for Lamont Wade. Gonzalez, Walcott, and Valentine from first to third. This is an example of just how big Adrian Johnson's strike zone will go, though. Hit into center field, hit well. Drifting back is Grisham, and he'll make the catch. When you said stretch it out, I thought maybe like in the fifth or sixth inning. <laughs> oh, no, just the top of the first. Let's take a look at the StatCast 3D power by Google Cloud on Michael Walker. You mentioned the different pitches that he'll throw, and all of them he'll pretty much use them. Change up, four seamer, cutter, sinker, curveball combo. His velocity is down. It averages right a little bit below 92. That's below the normal fastball, but. He has excellent command. So here's Jock Peterson. You know the one thing that really gets an umpire in trouble. Is when you have two different strike zones. You call one team. With a tight strike zone and you call the other team with a bigger strike zone that gets noticed immediately. And that sets a bad attitude across a dugout, believe me. One and two. Peterson lifetime is hit for the cycle against Walker. See Tatis out in right field. Not easy to play center in right field right now. The sun is miserable. Pulled on the ground and foul. Jock with seven home runs, 25 driven in. So two and two with Tyro Estrada to follow.
three and two. And the walk. Just take a look at the Padres defensively. It's a defense that's brought to you by your Bay Area GMC dealers. This is the defense that leads the National League in fewest errors. Soto, Grisham, and Tatis. That's your outfield, best arm in right field. Bogarts and Machado on the left side. Kim and Cronenworth on the right side. Gary Sanchez, he'll be in the squad, put down the signs. Estrada 291. Fouls this one out of play. He's got nine home runs, 28 driven in. Michael Conforto to follow. Mentioned how tough it was for the outfielders. Center field and right field right now. It's also a tough backdrop for hitters. There's a shine on the batter's eye in center field. Very high. It's two balls and one strike. And tough for catchers, too. You're absolutely right. You're just not comfortable. Popped up, shallow right field. Anybody over there? Cronenworth with a nice play. Toughest part about that play is that as the ball goes down the right field line, it'll come, it'll slide back towards the foul line, towards the playing surface. And he used every bit of that big old first baseman's glove to make that play. That's a good play. So here's Conforto. Three for nine lifetime against Michael Walker. The as would hit Mike Stremski on deck. Peterson at first with his lead. Pulled on the ground, foul. Way out in front. He's Conforto. A change of absolutely doing what it's designed to do. Get that bat, that hitter off his back leg, reaching. We saw first saw Michael Walker. He didn't have that pitch. So. 2 high fastball. He was also a high 90s uh, fastball guy. But in nine years, as we mentioned, this is his 10th year at the big league level. Things have changed and he's adjusted. Foul as he goes the other way. With Machado playing right in that hole between third and short. One and two. Well, he had the right hat on. It's a healthy swing and a foul straight back. That's perfect placement for the 91. If you have a 99 mile an hour fastball when you come into the game, and 10 years later you're throwing 91, you better be putting it where you want to put it. That was placed right on his hands. Perfect pitch location wise. Up the middle. Bogarts will make the play. And that'll do it. After one, one nothing. Padres. And it'll be Gary Sanchez, who was a giant only in the minor leagues this year. 
and he's really helped the the Padres offensively. In a short period of time, he's got six home runs and 16 runs batted in. And he's got he's got lots of power. He's got the kind of power where he doesn't even have to hit it flush to hit it over the no. wall. Those are three pitches all in the same spot. Is Taylor Rogers getting loose? Trying to crowd him, just wanted to have the Sanchez be able to extend his arms. And he's got to throw strikes here. He does, and it's three and two. To me, like he's been sitting on a breaking ball. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm surprised that Sanchez took that pitch. So he's seen five pitches, and he hadn't seen the big crossover slider yet. Walker says, I got it, and he does. In front of Lamont Wade, he was, was crashing in as fast as he could. A rare pop out to the pitcher. But you know what? I, I like the fact that, that Walker took charge. He did. He called him off. He says, I got it. So Lamont Wade Jr. says, All right, it's all yours. Get it over here, call it off. He looked around, see, he took a look where Wade was. I mean, look, as growing up as a kid, he made that play every day. Behind his back. Here's Rubnet Odor. And he almost got hit, and it's one ball and no strikes. Odor is the DH tonight. He takes that slider for a strike. Hassan Kim is on deck. Skied out to the left for Conforto. Two outs. Well, get a summer sweet offer for most summer games, including the fireworks show on July 3rd, the 4th of July, and the Red Sox. Go to sfgiants.com slash sweets. So here's Kim, who's at 245. Five home runs, 20 runs batted in. And a strike. This is the first time any of these hitters have seen Ryan Walker. Always been impressed with Ha Sung Kim. I mean, he was a superstar in Korea, but when he signed a contract with the Padres, he went right to the big leagues. And he had to learn to hit in the United States at the big league level, which is not an easy thing to do. He's a good player. Yeah, plays all around. Really good defensive shortstop. Slowly hit to Crawford. Crawford knows he has to hurry. Not in time. Another one the Giants will look at. So that'll be a base hit for Kim. Pretty good speed going down the line from the right side. No backswing whatsoever. <laughs> so he gets out of the box quickly. Crawford knew he had to hurry, not even his arm was enough to get Kim and that's going to be the last pitch from Ryan Walker. See what Kim did when he crossed the base he threw out his arms like he was safe. <laughs> I get kicked out of a game for doing that. Wait, what level. Big leagues. I'm on experts. 
Taylor Rogers, the new pitchers now for the Giants. 29 time he's come in. Three and two with the 296 ERA. Very solid first half numbers. 32 strikeouts in 24 and a third. Here's Grisham who takes a strike. Grisham at 195 with six home runs, 17 driven, and he's a gold glover. And they got him picked off. Wade's throw into left field. So that's ruled a stolen base. I think. Yeah, it has to be. I mean, he had a huge jump. He just got as far as he could. He was going on first movement. And he kind of took the inside route to try and block out Wade as best he could. Wade threw high. And indeed, it is a stolen base. There's a strike. I mean, there's no line. So you can exaggerate it a little bit as far as running inside. See reverse numbers for Grisham hitting better against lefties than righties. Reverse splits. One and two. Got him. Giants are coming up. One nothing. Padres. Yes, takes the first pitch high. Yesterday. He has was two for four and those were the only two hits he had in the series. There he takes a strike. He's only faced Walker one time and he drew a walk. Giants fans will get their first look in person. With Luis Matos who's on deck. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Might be a little better for the hitters with the backdrop, but maybe not. Stays alive, pulls this one foul. Take a look at our ball dude down the line, Bert Strain. Where's Bert? It's like you can play shortstop right now. And over there is Letty Cottrell. Our ball babe down the third baseline tonight. He has out in front as he lifts this one to right field. Here's Matos. <laughs> Batting six, center fielder, number 29, Luis Matos. Nice round of applause. Well, you can say part of the future, but realistically, it's part of the present. Part of the present, indeed. Up to middle. Bogarts, can he throw him out? He can. So Matos retired on one pitch, two quick outs. And here's the red hot Brandon Crawford. Crawford had six hits in the series at Dodger Stadium. He's having fun. It's 13 years in the big leagues. He is having a great time this season. He's also Jordan. hit Walker well. He's seven for twelve with four doubles and a triple. That's Onich. There he 
you see those numbers. That includes postseason. To watch Crawford around the rookies on this club, and tonight they've got seven rookies on the club. I mean, he's just having fun. There's a strike. Casey Schmidt hit on the arm in L.A. Not in the lineup tonight, but he had good results from a, ne a negative X-ray. Time now for our American Express level up. Patrick Bailey, the last eight games, 10 for 29, hitting a cool 345, which includes six extra base hits and seven RBIs. He's already made an impact defensively. Bailey. Little flinch, very quiet at the plate, takes a ball. Two and oh, not fishing. It's not an easy one to lay off of either. I know you have count leverage, you're at 1 0, oh, you're probably sitting on a fastball, but the sell job from the arm speed of Waka, it sells the changeup. You think you're getting a, ch a fastball with the arm action. Two balls and a strike. Softball, change up, change up, change up, curveball. Giants would love to get VR up this inning with men on base. They will. Down the line. Crawford on the move. First and third. And the first hit of the game. It's Patrick Bailey. I mean, that's that's uh, a veteran's type of it at bat by a rookie. Works the count 3 1, and then just sits on something soft. That's all he's seen in the at bat. He gets a little elevation and rakes it down the line. An easy read with two outs. He's going on contact. Can easy get to third base. And indeed, VR is going to hit with two men on. Here's VR, VR. Had a couple at bats in LA. You see, it's a high fly ball to the left. On the move is Soto. And on the first pitch, VR is retired, and so are the Giants. Third inning coming up. He's now faced the top of the order, and that's Fernando Tatis Jr. And he hits a shot under the glove of Crawford. And Tatis is aboard. Now a message presented by Pacifico. Pacifico is a crisp golden lager. Brewed for those who know. It's what's behind a label that matters. So base hit is it squirted under the glove. I thought I heard base hit. I thought I heard base hit. But it says E1 or air on the board. E6. We we'll have to look into this. So it'll the opposite field home run. Spin liner. I don't know what the velocity on it, but it had to be in the three digits. That's 104. That's just a do or die play.
And that's a good thing that's foul. That had some spinach on it. Because the Giants had nobody there. Well, we've seen this guy do this. I mean, he's got some back control. He's not up there just trying to yank one over the wall. He can finesse the ball if you create opportunity with the defense. Especially in two strike counts against lefties. That's a great pitch. And that's something that he really could do early in the year. Number one, he didn't have that velocity. That was 95. Number two, he planted that thing right on the thumbs. Soto making a lot of hard contact lately. And he's got one of the best eyes in the game. He makes you work. One of the few power guys that is completely comfortable in a two strike situation. I mean, those are perfect pitches thrown by Tater Rogers. One and two. That's why that's not a strike. Two and two. Fordo coming in. It's a nice kick for Rogers. Well, the Giants upcoming Aloha shirt is extra special for fans that love the food at Oracle Park. Before the Saturday's game against the D-backs, first 20,000 fans score an Aloha foodie shirt presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Enjoy incredible or park favorites like crazy crab sandwiches and uh, wear your iconic concessions on your shirt. SFGiants.com slash promotions. When it's time for a change, think Speedy. Oil change and auto service, you're trusted. Oil change. Take a look at the numbers for Junis. 20th appearance on the air. He's 3-3 three and three with a 4-1-2 ERA. Look at the strikeouts. 48 against 16 walks and 39 and a third. And he's got his hands full. Lifetime against Machado. Machado 5 for 7 with a couple of doubles. Snap throw. Tatis back. Tatis has got 12 steals on the year, and he was caught trying to steal third in the first inning. But I don't think that's going to deter him from trying it again. No, he's in the go mode. I think he takes it as a personal challenge to the catcher that threw him out. Junis has an excellent move to first base. And he's very quick out of the stretch. I mean, he will give Bailey a chance to throw out, but uh, Tatis, if he decides to steal here. <laughs> Off the end of the bat, foul. That's 1.22 seconds on load time, which is excellent. Anything under 1.25 seconds is above average. So keep an eye on Tatis. Two balls in a strike. Try to wrap around a two seamer. Just missed. He's got a good sinker. And we've seen Junis with velocities that go mid 90s. He's got some reach back he can get to. Yeah. 
Be careful with that one. It's two and two. Yeah, I don't know if you want to put it in the scout report to throw Machado hanging sliders, but uh, this particular pitch, it was a great pitch. <laughs> we say that because Machado is a very good mistake hitter. He likes the mistakes above the belt, out over the plate. On the ground, foul. Right behind Matt Williams. There was a day where that was right in the back pocket of Matt Williams. Now, that was like three surgeries ago. That's Matty. The Big Marine, one of our all time favorites right there. Great giant. Good baseball man. Runner goes. Hit high and foul down the right field line and out of play. Junis has used up his disengagement, so he can throw over, but if he doesn't get it out, it's a balk. Yeah. And I think that absolutely allows another half step of lead for a base dealer like Tatis. Base hit. Tatis is going to challenge Yastrzemski, and it's first and third. Onage is onage. Six for eight lifetime. And we've seen uh, Machado a lot over the years serve that ball to right field, especially at two strike counts against a guy with a good breaking ball, which is what Junis is. Bogarts drew a walk in the first. It's also hitting the nine double plays this year. That's a lot. Strike on the breaking ball. Giants pull the infield not all the way in, but at least better than halfway. Crawford, Estrada, Wade, got him. Just what you were talking about. So here's Lamont Wade. It's, uh, it's really fun to watch this guy swing the bat right now. He's got such a great awareness of the strike zone and such a great feel for his, the bat head. On the ground to second. One out. Watch Lamont Wade Jr. batting practice today, and it was just one bullet after another. Complete command. You saw that graphic about the run differential. The Giants outscored the Dodgers in that three game series 29 to 8. And the 29 runs most ever by the Giants in a three game series at Dodger Stadium. How about that? Peterson drew a walk in the first. Well, they're a confident group right now. And I mean, from the first hitter in the lineup all the way down to the guy hit ninth and the guys on the bench. And that confidence in each other. If an at bat gets by the guy hitting, it get, the next guy is going to pick him up, and so on down the line. One and two to Jack Peterson, who in LA in that series, Peterson was two for nine. Here he swings and fouls it straight back. Ooh, he was on it.
right back to Walker. He'll underhand it to Cronenworth. Good change up. Well, add a Giants game to your plans for the 4th of July festivities two weeks from today on July 3rd. Enjoy a fireworks show right here at Oracle Park to celebrate our Independence Day. Giants will then take on the Mariners. See the sky light up with red, white, blue fireworks. SFGiants.com slash promotions. Two outs. Here's Tyro Estrada. Estrada. Popped out to Cronenworth, who made a nice play in the first. Here he's sharply on the ground to Machado. Nine pitch inning and a three up, three down inning for Walker. Fourth inning coming up. He's going to open up the inning with a base hit. Now a message from Grayton Resort and Casino. Try your luck and win big in the Press for Cash giveaway at Grayton Resort and Casino. Win up to $1 million every Saturday in June. 100 winners guaranteed. Press for Cash only at Grayton Resort and Casino. Here's Sanchez. With Ryan Walker on the mound in the Second inning, Sanchez popped out to Walker in foul territory. There's a strike. I was going to say. Was it possible that Bailey and Sanchez were teammates in Sacramento? But I don't think so. I think Bailey was in double A when Sanchez was in Sacramento. Yeah, I think you're right. Nothing was more odd with a catcher changing uniforms and then seeing the Giants than the Benji Molina in 2010. You know that <laughs> that was weird. Sanchez just hits it bad on a check swing. I mean, all of a sudden, he's catching for the Rangers in the World Series. He got two World Series rings that year. Benji Molina got the ring that the Giants won in 2010, and if you're the losing team, you get a, a ring that's a pennant ring. So he got one from the Rangers. You got remember you got a really nice ovation. Yeah. That first game. Yeah, two time Willie Mack award winner, very popular player. Take a look at the fastball going up, just hitting literally inches above the fingers on the right hand. And it gets Adrian Johnson, and that's what Dave Gresher is checking him out. That's your opportunity if you're a trainer. To just tell your plate umpire, you know, Adrian, your strike zone has been a little weird tonight. Or, Adrian, it's Kipe's birthday. If you want to take the rest of the game off, here's your <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's take a look and see where it does indeed hit him. Right smack in the nose. Got him. Set it up beautifully. Had one pitch to go out of the strike zone on the 2 2 count. Went, got him to chase. Perfect pitch. That is exactly what he intended to do with that location, and he gets him to fish. Here's Rugnet Odor, who hit a fly ball to the left. And he looks at a strike. Line drive, that's a fair ball. It'll be Yaz digging it out perfectly. Everybody has to hold at second and third. 
If he doesn't do it perfectly, that's a run on the board. And really a nice swing of the bat for Bodur. He got a little hang on the breaking ball. Again, looked like he was up there looking for the very thing he got. He had good balance in that swing. But let's watch the dig out and the mechanics. I mean, we talk about how fundamentally sound Yastrzemski is, and it's a great example of it. It's just a compact get and go. So now the infield is all the way in. And a strike. Out of play, and it's a quick 0 2. 94 with movement coming right in on him. Really got up the bat nicely. When you have an open first base like Junis has, it makes it easy to pitch inside because if you hit him, so what? You got a place to put him. Emergency check swing. And he lives to see another pitch. I always like pitching the guys inside when there was an open first base. In tight, not by much. Junis got out of the mess in the third inning with a double play ball to end the inning. This is not going to happen here. Is this is going to knock in a pair? It's three nothing. On the nice at bat. Really a good opposite field swing of the bat, a two strike situation, and not an overswing at all. Just think back up the middle, get yourself in position, head stays down right through the swing, and he just sort of, like a tennis swing, serves it over to right center. It's an experienced at bat right there. Here's Trent Christian. And tight. Well, that one little emergency swing. Got Kim another pitch. Yeah, he lived to see another pitch. Matos will come in and make the catch. And here's Tatis. Tatis. If we now look back, it looks like. The ball he did hit to short was ruled an error as he fouls it back. I wasn't going to erase it, but I just did. I'm not giving in. Right. Ooh. Got away with one there. Gang's all here. School's out. Bring the family to the yard. This is going to be foul. Two outs, two in, and two strikes on Fernando Tatis Jr. A 
nice little one hop scoop there from Bailey. Tell him catcher catches the ball off his right shoulder. He kind of backhands and puts himself in position to make a throw. And Bailey took a peek down the first baseline. Doing two. Been a little bit of an offensive night for the Padres. They got seven hits. Got him. Two runs on the board. It's three nothing, San Diego. Here's Michael Conforto. Giants now trail by three. And Fordo rolled out to Bogarts to end the first inning. And he takes that pitch high. It is such a different Michael Walker. Oh, really? I mean, the very first time we saw him, a young arm, just a flamethrower. And now I mean, he's a finesse pitcher. But what he's learned is how to upset the timing of the hitter in the box. Been a lot of reach this first time through the lineup. Giants hitters have been off that. Drive back foot and on their front foot. That's, you lose your power when that happens. This is a fair ball to Cronenworth. Giants have one hit. Here's Yaz. Yaz hit a fly ball to right field. See what Michael Walker has done since May 2nd. I mean, he leads the National League in ERA under one. On one hop to Bogarts, who makes the play. But it really is a great example of what pitching is. What is pitching? Well, what is hitting? Hitting's timing. Pitching is upsetting the timing of the hitter. Hey, look, it's it's great if you can throw 98 by a guy. But it's also not the only way you can get people out. Establish a speed. Establish a movement. Adjust your speeds. Adjust your location. Read the swing type of the hitter. Is he a short arm swinger? Is he a long arm swinger? Is he a low ball guy? Is he a high ball guy? Learn these things. Matos takes a strike to even the count. I mean, just simple things. Find out how do you pitch to a low ball hitter? Pitch him up. How do you pitch to a high ball hitter? You pitch him down. Up and in, two balls in one strike. Guys who have short arms, you pitch them away. Guys who have long arms, you pitch them in. Two and two. And walk his mind, he's three pitches ahead. Of the pitch he's about to throw. Every pitch in every place that he throws that ball to sets up the next pitch. And this is what he's learned, as we mentioned. He's in his tenth year. 
no longer a flamethrower. He's a finesse guy, and that's a big bridge to cross, and he's crossed it. And except, a one hopper. Except on that pitch. No strikeouts. Ground balls and the fly balls really were not hit very hard. Best hit balls, the only hit the Giants had. That was Bailey's single back in the second inning with two outs. Tap foul right up the foot of Matos. Good bat speed. One thing about Matos at 21 years old, I mean, he's had this bat speed since he's 17. That's the kind of hand speed that gives an old scout a big old smile. I mean, look, you can see he's put together like a running back. Skied to right. Who's going to call for it? It's Tatis. That'll end the inning. I'm going to take a two inning birthday. Well, the Giants going back into the bullpen here. So when it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change, tune up and smog experts. It's the rookie, Keaton Wynn, pitching at home for the first time. And his first pitch is drilled to left. Juan Soto has done it again. His second home run of the game to almost that exact same spot. It's 4 0 Padres. Wow. Well, the first home run was on a breaking ball. And this one, it's a fastball, but as Dave pointed out, almost at the same location. And DeSoto's credit, I mean, he goes with the location. And the problem with high fastballs is they elevate on contact, and he backspins it right over the wall for the second time tonight. That's an impressive swing of the bat. Really impressive. Definitely not the way that Keaton Wynn drew it up. He throws a fastball here to Machado. When you envision the first pitch that you throw, wearing the home uniform. Yeah, you, you, you're kind of ru rudely greeted. Machado pops this one up. It'll be Yastrzemski. One away. Keaton Wynn's a big fella. 6'4, 230 pounder, a hard thrower. You'll see mid to high 90s with four seamers and two seamers. He's got a splitter and a fastball, and I think his splitter is really a, a, a great swing and miss kill pitch. Part of the story of this road trip, Mike, was Keaton Wynn making his debut in St. Louis. There's that splitter. He had his family, his friends there. They came over from that small town in Iowa, drove over to St. Louis, and watched him pitch. How many people live in a city? 198. I can't call that a city. <laughs> That's not even a town. Another splitter. 0 and 2. And the other story about it, the very first ballpark he ever walked into is when he walked into it as a big leaguer. Uh, amazing. He'd never been to a major league game. 0 2. And he got the save that night. Giants had a big lead, but he pitched the last four innings. So by rule, he got the save. Then he got optioned, but activated with all the injuries. Fastball at 98. He just froze Xander Bogarts. I mean, that's an easy 98. Hey, he's a standout multi sport athlete at Perkin Community High School. <laughs> all district at football, baseball, basketball, and track. Of course, there was only 11 people in his graduating class. We're just making up as you see the high catapult. Well, it, it, no matter what, the size of his town, how many people were in his district, when you stand next to him, you can see why he's such a good overall athlete. He's a big, strong kid. On the ground, Cronenworth, Estrada backs up, plays it cleanly, and throws him out. Well, he kind of got ambushed by Juan Soto. After that, he looked good. Midway through five, it's four nothing. He was here not just as a fan; he was also part of the pregame ceremonies. Lucille coming over to say hi. I love watching him play. 
Well, he had a pretty good clue out there on the mound. Threw a semi strike. Semi. Bill Hop. Semi, yeah. Ceremonial first pitch tonight. Brandon Crawford takes low from Michael Waka. Uh, Paid a bit of a pie thrower, but you know, he got it up there pretty good speed. <laughs> He's a do it all kind of player for the Warriors. Brandon Crawford hard hit, but on the ground, another ground ball. Man, Michael Waka's getting one after another. This is what it looked like. High thrower, let's see. All right, let's take a look. That's my scout report. I'm sticking to it. High <laughs> thrower. Yeah. But he didn't bounce it. No. He got it to the gloves. Kind of hit the strike zone, too. I'm impressed. Brandon Crawford wanted to come out and catch that ceremonial first pitch. He's a big Warriors fan. Here's Patrick Bailey. He's got the only hit for the Giants. Padres have eight hits. You, know, you, you, you look at this lineup, the names, and then watch them hit tonight, and you think their team batting average is what? Coming in, 228? 228. That's another ground ball. The first, two down. Well, they have absolutely underachieved so far this year. Feels like they're coming into their own right now. Catch every pitch with the fastest internet from Xfinity with a reliable connection you can count on at the clutch even during peak hours. The next generation Xfinity 10G network. I'm voting that guy best dressed tonight. It's got to be a relative. Well, it, I think the jersey next was hidden too, so maybe a relative of. Both VR launches one to deep left. Gone up over the wall. That's the David VR swing right there. His fifth home run of the year. It's four to one. He had it at bat in the Dodgers series where he took a high fastball and raked it to left field. It was significant because with his uppercut, a lot of teams were pitching him high, hard stuff. When he's hitting that high fastball, I mean, everything falls into place. And here he puts himself in position to an off speed pitch and you cannot tell me he was not up there looking for it. And he knocks this thing out of the ballpark at 105 with top spin. That's an impressive swing of the bat. Giants needed that. They did. The art needed that. Yeah, even more. So now Lamont Wade takes a fastball for a strike. Gabe Kapler has staunchly said every time it comes up with Whoever's asking him about it. You don't by accident have two years like the ones VR had the last couple of years. MVP in double A, MVP in triple A. You're, you're absolutely right. When he got sent out, he went down to Sacramento and, and he was said admittedly, I'm in a dark place here. But he he rose from the ashes and he started to light it up. He got a good swing going. His batting practice today was spectacular. And he was just flipping balls out all over the ballpark. Well, that would be something for the Giants if David VR could get it going again. One and two. Wade, a little off balance against Waka so far. Takes high. I mean, they're beat up at third base right now. J.D. Davis has the ankle thing. Casey Schmidt got hit by that pitch in the forearm. Two and two to Lamont Wade. And Lamont lines one up the middle base hit. Maybe it's going to be contagious. A little bobble from Grisham, but Wade will stay at first. Talk about it. Just the command that he has in his bat right now. It's really enjoyable to watch him swing it. So selective. Always seems to get a good pitch to hit. Not a whole lot of difference with this swing when he's trying to hit the ball or ballpark when he's trying to go back up the middle. And that's a dangerous hitter. Lamont Wade had some of the best at bats of the year in L.A. He really did. And the one he hit off of Bobby Miller, a, a breaking ball, middle end that he breaked out was a three run swing of the bat. And it really kind of changed the whole feeling of the game. It was just a spectacular at bat. Watch how quick the hand action is. There is no wasted motion. Just a very calm load, puts his hands in a high position. And that we've said it all year when he makes contact with the ball his body is right between his feet and it's equal weight distribution from the back leg through the front foot and it's just an incredible amount of balance and power. 
And that, when a guy locks it in and he's got that going, it's fun to watch him hit. So now Jock Peterson, who has walked and grounded out. After the meeting on the mound, Jock launches one high and deep and hooking foul into San Francisco Bay. Oh, way out the bay. It's a designer strike. <laughs> He was going to get to it. Somebody will go get that ball. Oh, yeah. They got Mark the Shark out there. There's Mark the Shark. Yeah. A one. That one high and tight. I like the pitch, though. Home run from VR. Line drive base hit from Lamont Wade. Giants trying to get back in this game. That one almost the same spot, two and one. Jock needs time. Something got in his eye. Let me look at that home run again. David VR wants to grab that iPad. You want to watch that a few times. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's supposed to look like. Walker's 2 1. Right at the knees. Sitting on that same curveball he got in the first pitch of this at bat there. I mean, he's had three fastballs since that opening pitch, which was the slow curveball. And his back leg wasn't in on any of those fastballs. See if he stays with it. 2 and 2. He threw him the off speed pitch. It was a changeup, and Jock pops it up. Tatis. For out number three. Giants are on the board though. And a great sign from David VR. It's been a while since he'd gone deep. Giants.com slash special events. I'm not even gonna point out what's on that t-shirt. Keaton Wynn, first pitch. Gary Sanchez grounded to VR, who throws out the Padres catcher. Four to one pods in the sixth. As you mentioned Keaton Wynn's got two types of fastball, four seam and two seam, and he can get ground balls. You have a guy who's got a power arm that can get ground balls and get strikeouts, and that is that's a good add to your pen. He gave up the home run first pitch he threw tonight to Juan Soto. Since then, the picture of efficiency splitter for a strike to Odor has one of the biggest hits of the game. A double in the fourth inning. Odor took a big cut there. It's 0-2. Odor is 5'11. That's what he's listed as the media guy. But when he gets in his stance and gets down, he looks like he's 5'4. Real tight strike zone. 0 2. Right back through the legs of Wynn. Crawford's got it. Throws him out. That was like a, a magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it catches your attention when it goes through your legs. <laughs> Yeah. Not the place you necessarily are hoping for. No. Two down. Hassan Kim. Two for two. Two impressive at bats. I mean, that last one, there's 97 for strike one. It was like that's exactly what he was trying to do. Just kind of sawed off his swing and punched one into right field. Oh, and two. You know, they throw a lot of off-speed stuff in, in the Korean leagues and the Japanese leagues, Taiwan. And guys really develop technique, especially at two-strike counts against off-speed stuff. And what Kim did in his big at bat that knocked him too, I mean, it was perfect execution. He did it a two-strike count. Splitter in an 0-2 count. It did. It was, it was a beautiful swing. Drove in two, made it three nothing. It was one nothing. Wins one two, on the ground. Tricky hop, Crawford high throw, and it goes past Wade. Now Kim has to scramble to get back. It hit the rail and stayed in play. But Hassan Kim's got his third hit. Now once that ball got past VR, it was going to be Crawford's. Play it, it became a 
a play that Crawford had to alter his balance to get a quick throw off just because of this, the foot speed from Kim. And it was a do or die play. Giants catch a break there. That ball didn't go in the dugout and put Kim in scoring position. They will give the ninth place hitter Trent Grisham a chance to hit here in the sixth. Padres four, Giants one. Kim started and then didn't go, and then Patrick Bailey just missed it. So Kim will get to second on what I would assume is going to be a pass ball. Uh, he didn't get crossed up. I just think it's late movement that fooled him. Yeah. He just didn't get the, the the drop on the split was so big he couldn't catch it. So that's big. That means Kim at his speed in scoring position. Oh one. Grisham fouls it. So and two. Another splitter. Always seems like this guy elevates his game against the Giants. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe that. I, I, whatever batting average I see this guy have, I don't believe it. He comes into this series hit 194. On the ground to first, Wade dropped down to a knee, and he'll take it to the bag himself. Nice job by Wynn to work around that infield hit. Midway through six, Giants down four to one. Innings off tonight. It's his birthday. How could you not when Andy's here? Well, Bubba and Andy are pretty inseparable. That, that is an amazing bond between those two. 4 1, Giants trailing, bottom six. Michael Walker has been really efficient. He misses with that one. It's 2 0 to Tyro Estrada. Not by much. Let's see if the Giants can put a little pressure on him here in the sixth inning. The Padres might be a little thinner in the bullpen tonight than they usually are. Wow, he changed up on him. The change up's been his money pitch. Both to right, he's into left. He's, yeah, there's definitely a couple guys they're not going to want to use. Hater, their closer being one of them. He's been getting a lot of work lately. They'd like to give him the night off. Yanked it foul. Born. 1950, Dwayne Kuyper, a very good ball player over a 12-year career. The Indians Giants, one of the best announcers in baseball today. So thank you, Tom. Yeah, whatever Tom's old days is. Well said. Looks like Casey Stingle. <laughs> that may not actually be Tom. That one is full foul. Yeah, relish those last few minutes up there, Kuyper. Yeah, he said he hasn't had a cookie in over a year. We just caught him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn uh, full count three and two. But if Dan had made the cookies, you got to have one. Got to have them. Because she could cook. Kipe wouldn't mind a long rally here from the Giants. More Andy time. Three two. Estrada to right center field. Tatis. One away. That is the theme of the night. The Giants are having a hard time squaring up Michael Walker. Well, he's really been very good with mixing location and, and uh, hitting his spots, mixing his speeds, changing the movement. He hasn't been very predictable. Michael Conforto 0 for 2. He's grounded out twice. Going after that first pitch changeup. Walker does not have a strikeout. He's pitched through two walks, one of the first, one of the second. The one blemish on the report card, the solo shot home run off of the bat of David VR in the fifth inning. It's like an old school night. Got the call. He definitely has Adrian Johnson, the plate up bar, looking for strikes. Two just misses. He's such a different pitcher. When we first saw him, like say 2012, 2013, flame on. 
I mean, he's 6'6", 220, he's a big fella. And when we first saw him, he threw like a guy 6'6". Six, six. Throws the sinker and gets the comebacker. Two down. But over time, he's in his 10th year at the big league level, and he, 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 you change. You have to adjust to it. That fastball goes away. You got to figure out other ways to get people out. That's pretty impressive. That's the Padres pitchers as a whole. Lowest hard hit rate and average exit velocity of all pitching staffs. Yeah, this takes a slow curve. Well, the Padres haven't hit yet, but they're in every game because of two things their defense, which is the best in the National League, and their pitching. And hey, Rob Dins here. <laughs> Yastrzemski to deep right field. That one is gone up onto the arcade. Second home run for the Giants. It's four to two. Finds a way to wait on the changeup. And the mistake with the changeup was it was up. Hits it out of here at 97 miles per hour, but he had backspin on it, and that gave it carry. And the Giants inch closer. Now Matos taking outside ball one. Be a good spot for the first home hit for Luis Matos. Was that one foul? He worked along at bat his last time up. And they brought the pop bombs. <laughs> Big chopper to short. Bogarts, a little double clutch, but he throws out Matos for out number three. Well, we'll see if Kipe comes back or not. He may just stay up there with Andy. <laughs> The difference in this game has been Michael Walker, the pitcher for the Padres, has been very, very good. First pitch swinging by Tatis to Crawford over to first, and that's the first out here at the top of the seventh inning. Four to Padres, and here again, my partner and my pal, the birthday boy, Bubba. Dwayne Kai. Bubba, Bubba. So Tatis bounce out. Here's Soto. So while I was gone, I missed three home runs. Yes, you did. Soto, the first of the three. And here he takes a strike. Four runs on nine hits for the Padres. Well, the Giants with two runs on four hits, and two of those four hits have left the park. Good pitch. This is the second career appearance in the big leagues for Keaton Wynn, the Giants pitcher. His last at bat against Soto, Soto took him deep the opposite way. I always love to see rookies pitch against the guy who's hit a home run their next at bat. He's trying to crowd him. But you look for one thing to see if he nibbles. Big chopper is Estrada giving ground and he throws him out. Hey, that's a 3 1 split. <laughs> Take a look at the two home runs that Soto has hit tonight. The first one was a slider off of Ryan Walker. That was back in the first inning with one out. And then he does it against Keaton Wynn in the first pitch of Wynn's outing tonight. Very close to the same spot. Well, the Giants uh, on this perfect road trip came back a number of different times to win games. This is VR who cuts it off, and that'll end the inning. Three ground balls. Giants are coming up. Crawford first. Right now, new pitcher for the Padres. So when it's time for a change, 
Thanks, Speedy. Oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune-up and smog experts. Go ahead. 31st appearance for Hill having a good season. 28 to third innings with a 3 one ADRA. ERA. 33 years old in his fifth year at the big league level. And he's a side armor that throws hard. I mean, from the left side, very unique. You'll see low 90s velocity with a slider and a cutter. So this is J.D. Davis batting for Brandon Crawford. Hill tough on lefties. I mean, really tough on lefties. Oh, and two. If you said that, I apologize. No, uh, yeah, I think he's tough on everybody. I, I just don't think he's an easy C. And again, the velocity from the side kind of sets him apart from other side armors. And the other thing too, it, it, it's an illusion. But when you get that box, you think that ball's rising. And he's a, when he's on, he's a he's a tough guy to keep your top hand on the ball. In tight as he runs that in. And that's that riser we're talking about. Manny Gonzalez at first base said no swing. Got him. Now, word from Jack in the Box. Yo, Jack, that a baked brownie in my munchie meal? You know it, Snoop. Say less. Here's Patrick Bailey. You know, when I would get pinch hit for, and the guy that pinch hit for me struck out. Here's a bouncing ball back to Hill. Yeah. Depending on who the manager was, it's like you want to bite your tongue and said, "Well, I could have done that." I've heard you say that, but uh, the manager that you could get away with just about anything was Frank Robinson, who <laughs> you were his rookie. He brought you into the big leagues, and I think he actually laughed about it every time you did it. I could have done that. It made me laugh. Here's VR. Pierre's had a good game. He really just missed a home run in the second. And he did hit one in the fifth. Roll this one to second, and it'll be a good inning for Hill. Eighth inning coming up. Giants trail by two. Splitter, and then another splitter, and then a 97 or 98 mile an hour sinker. Here's Bogarts again who takes the pitch inside. One ball and no strikes. 4 2. Padres as we head to the top of the eighth inning. Bogarts jumps back out of the way. It's 2 0. Oh. Get the idea that Keaton Wynn is trying to pitch Bogarts inside. Some players moving around here on the infield. Swing and a miss. Davis comes in to play third. VR goes from third to second. Estrada goes to short. And the 2 1. Tap foul 2 and 2. So with Crawford getting pinch hit for it moves three different people around. Foul again. Meanwhile, out there at the Crazy Crab Shack. Those are good. Got him. 97 mile an hour sink. Well, you could sink a ball up around the waist and have a guy swing through it. That's a good sinker. It means you're still getting movement even as that sinker raises up. Here's Cronenworth. He bounced out in the fifth inning. Yeah. 
Four runs on nine hits, two runs on four hits for the Giants. Somebody ought to let that dad know that when that little girl turns 18, she's still going to want to do that. Of course she is. <laughs> and he wouldn't want it any other way. Swing and a miss. Two and two. He's going to have to do that at uh, the father daughter dance when she gets married. <laughs> That'll be part of the dance. Yep. And also at that age, you don't get to watch the game. No, you don't care as long as your little ones. Hey, Dad, what's the score? I have no idea. <laughs> I just went through it for two innings. There you go. Okay. Nice going, Dad. So what's happened so far? That's why you have a Father's Day. You know, you earn it. High into right center field. Yastrzemski got a good jump and he'll track it down. And with two outs, that'll bring up the catcher, Gary Sanchez. You, know, you see a ball hit the gap like that. You see two outfielders converge. I mean, you always worry when a young player like Luis Matos, he still is. You know he, he hadn't been up here very long. Well, he hasn't played a lot of outfield with Mike Yastrzemski, and it's a perfect opportunity for a miscommunication. And you worry about it on a play like that. On the ground to third, and it'll be oh, or uh, J.D. Davis, and that'll end the inning. Strikeout, fly ball, ground ball. Giants are coming up. Top of the order. No, I think it was uh, Saturday. All right. Gets hit on the right arm. Yeah, you're right, Smooth. It was it was yesterday. But remember now that earlier in the road trip, Mitch Hanniger got hit almost the same spot and broke his arm. Yeah. So when he got hit yesterday, everybody held their breath and it got real quiet. The Giants dugout. Well, right. When he got hit and then taken out of the game. Sharply on the ground to Bogarts. Hill's been good. So was Waka. And that'll bring up Jock Peterson. Both these teams right now have really, really confident bullpens going. Peterson takes wide one ball and no strikes. <laughs> Big chopper foul. One ball and one strike. Peterson tonight a walk. A ground ball back to the pitcher and then a fly ball to right. Off the end of the bat, one and two. Got him. Peterson knew it. Perfect location. So, with two outs, Giants will see if they can get something going with two down with Tyro Estrada.
Off the end of the bat foul on to the. Bullpen with Hill. It's five up five down. Hasn't thrown a lot of pitches to get those five outs. No, he hasn't. And he gets Estrada swinging three strikeouts in two innings. Ninth inning coming up right after the game. Here's Odor on a check swing foul. Japanese. Keaton Wynn has been impressive. I mean, the stuff and the location. Smith at short. Estrada back to second. VR at first. Off the end of the bat. Foul. For the Giants in the bottom of this inning, they'll have Conforto, Yastrzemski, and Matos. Ooh, that split has really given Bailey some problems, and I don't think he caught a lot of that, but it caught a lot of Adrian Johnson. Yeah, he's not happy. Remember, we saw two innings ago, Bailey. I mean, he whiffed on a on a split. It was ruled a pass ball, but I mean, it just gives you an idea of how nasty that split is, even when it's up. Because Bailey's got great hands. Up the middle and a base hit for Odor, as that leads off the ninth. It's a two hit night for Odor. Here's Tatis. This is not Tatis. This is Kim. Ooh. And boy, you're right. Well, if it's hard to catch, it's hard to hit. Well, you're absolutely right. Not a comfortable feeling for a catcher. It really, I mean, it's in a way, it's almost like Bailey is trying to catch a 90 mile an hour knuckleball. Fifty pitches on the night for a win. I mean, he's strong enough to throw 70 plus. Not really an issue right now. This is just a pep talk from a catcher. Plus, you never know. Bailey may have caught that 1-0 split. In a soft spot where he needs to kind of have a little walk to yep. get some feel back into his hand. But whatever, he's not having a whole lot of fun now trying to catch that split. I'd be a bad catcher because I just stopped calling it. <laughs> well, it's his best weapon, or at least one of the three. Three and oh. And strike. There's Grisham who's on deck. Guns want to keep this deficit at two. Matos with room out in left center field.
Uh, Kim's got three hits on the night. That one he thinks he just may have just missed one because about a third of the way down the baseline, he fired the bat down on the ground. That doesn't go unnoticed. If you're sitting in the Giants' dugout. Here's Grisham. 0 for 3. Wait, and it is. Take a look at that reaction. I mean, he's thinking, man, I just missed this thing. Boom! I mean, that bat's already got him three hits tonight. You got to take care of that. Thing. <laughs> Here's the old one pitch coming up. It's number 56 coming up for Keaton Wynn. Got him. Good split. Third strikeout for Wynn, and this is just filthy dirty. Way out front. Perfect location. Here's Tatis. And did it hit him? Patrick Bailey says no. India Johnson came out right away and said it did. Now he's going to have to tell Bob Melvin that he made a mistake. Let's take a look at where it. It got the bat. Yeah. It did hit him. <laughs> That's a strike. Good reaction there, though, from Tatis. Nice sales job. I mean, a hit by pitch is a reviewable play, so I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. They got the call right. Go right back in there again. They went away. This is bounced foul. So win out in front of Fernando Tatis Jr. one and two. Hey, lefty got it. Boy. Got him and that'll end the inning. So the Giants are coming up two to tie three to go home for two Padres. He's had two save opportunities. He has not capitalized on either one an ERA of five two three. He is a very hard thrower. You'll see high 90s velocity with two and four seam fastballs. He's got a slider a cutter and a change up. A lot of sliders to right handed hitters. Sliders and change ups to left handed hitters. So Sable will try to get things started. Then it's Yastrzemski, then the Rook, Matos. And then JD Davis would like to get a crack. That's his ninth inning. It is VR with a home run in this game. Out of ball middle in and just put a sweet stroke on it. Knocked it out of here at 105 with top spin.
So Sable with an average of 252. We'll try to get aboard to lead off things here in the ninth. And right now he falls ahead. Two balls and no strikes. Sable, a patient hitter, has got a good idea of the strike zone. He'll work a count. Where you know. Easy take. You're a relief pitcher trying to save a ball game, and you have a two run lead, and you're a leadoff hitter. You don't want any easy takes. And a walk. He got pinched. He did. Nice at bat. So here's Yastrzemski who knocked one out of the park in the sixth inning. Ball five. Sanchez is going to come out and have a word with Garcia. And we're going to have a little word from the pitching coach, Ruben Diebla. Remember, it was Yastrzemski. With two outs in the ninth in St. Louis. With two strikes. Tied that game up with a home run. Hit to left field. Sable will go to third. Soto going to the right base. And now it's going to be Mato. Padres move their shortstop Bogarts to a pole position about four steps towards second base. And Yastrzemski just takes advantage of it. They opened up a slot, slices it right into the gap. So here's Matos. Three times Garcia has tried to get that slider over for strike run. 0 for 3. And immediately behind in the count. In the dirt. Here comes Sable. Yastrzemski to second. It's 4 3. A huge mistake. You get a run, you get a runner in score position. The force is removed. Breaking ball comes up high on Sanchez. Just ate him up. He had no chance. Right now, that slider is not the friend of Luis Garcia. Foul down the right field line. You could not hang that unblocked ball on Gary Sanchez. Think about breaking balls. When they land that far out in front of home plate, they're unpredictable. When they come up high, you have none chance as a catcher. Drew Carlton with an extreme red alert. 
Fly ball, center field. Yastrzemski will tag, and he will beat the throw. So a productive out from Matos. So the Padres now will be forced to bring the infield in. Best arm in the outfield is in right field for the Padres, and that's Tatis. He's got a cannon. Grisham in center, Soto in left, average arms at best. And that's a great play from Sanchez, and he didn't have any idea how he caught it. Garcia is not even close. And filled in. That slaughter has just not been there for him. And that's a big weapon he does not have. Two and oh to JD Davis. Three and oh. Not close. Fourteen pitches, he's throwing three strikes. And most of them have been easy takes. Right down the pipe. Three and one. Well, that's just an easy ninety-eight. Well, he doesn't have to throw JD Davis a strike. And he doesn't. Todd Melvin's seen enough. So we'll take a break. We got a pitching change. And we'll be back. 2 0 through eight appearances, 15 strikeouts against four walks. And he inherits a strikeout situation here. It's a low 90s guy with two types of fastball movement. It's got a cutter and a changeup. I should say slider and a changeup. Kind of a short armor. I don't know if I'm surprised by this or not, but right now the infield, the middle infield is playing back. Right off the bat, Sanchez has to go to work. We've seen Patrick Bailey in this spot with a safety squeeze. It's good butter. To even the count. You see movement running away. Good pitch. Got good speed with Yastrzemski at third. And he's got some of the best instincts on the base pass on this Giants team. He had the best arm in right field for the Padres. And that's a gift. And that changes everything. Now Bailey's got to cover it. And they set a wide target from Sanchez with an open base. I mean, he could nibble. And he just got the call. He has a third. Davis at first.
foul back. Right back out there again. I think the intent of that pitch was not to get in the strike zone. It was to stretch it out a little bit wider. The guy's going to give you a wide strike. You just keep going as far as you can. Especially in a one-two count. One and two. Line drive. Yes, has got to go back and tag. He does. Here's the throw. It's on line. And it's not in time. This game is tied. Padres are going to look to see if he left too early. Manny Machado at third base immediately lifted up his hands to the Padre bench. Really not a bad throw either from Juan Soto. A tag up is a reviewable play. Let's take a look. Oh, he's back on the base. So it turns out to be a great at bat for Patrick Bailey getting it done in a two strike count. And they went right back out there didn't they. Yep. So here's VR. VR takes the pitch wide, 1 and 0. That just gives you an idea when a guy is going stone cold, that's strike one. It should be anyway. Yeah. When you're going good, you get the call and you get a 1 0 advantage. <laughs> 2 and 0. And more importantly, he's seen two sliders. Thing that Carlton does not want to do is he does not want to walk a runner in the scoring position in mm -hmm. time all game. And he does not. The arc is swinging to put one another with the bleachers. He hit one back in the fifth. I have no problem with that swing. Not at all. And there's your free 90 feet to put a runner in scoring position. So here's Casey Schmidt. And we're going to get another visit. It's going to be a pep talk here. Ruben Diebla is going to say, look, it's two outs now. You have an open base. Remember, Carlton's a rookie. So he doesn't have to give a guy who is a free swinger and will go out of the strike zone. You do not have to give him a pitch in the strike zone. Plus, he's going to be a little anxious, wouldn't you think? Casey Smith's going to want to end this game, and he will chase. Saw Kerr, the left hander, starting to get heated up in the pin for the Padres. You've got average speed at best with J.D. Davis in second base. Remember, he's had a sore ankle. Ankle sprain here the last week where he's missed some games, so he's not running at 100%. Not close. One ball and no strikes. Clearly, you're right. They're trying to get 
Casey Smith to expand. And he wraps around a little two seam movement on that outside corner. That's a perfect pitch 1 0. That's when you tip a cap on. If you're ahead to count 1 0, you're not looking for that location. Two balls and one strike. But if you get a, a location like that on a 1 0 pitch, you figure if he gets behind the count, he's going to come back out there again. And this with a 2 1 count, I mean, you could guess low and away. And one thing we know about Schmidt is he can go the opposite way, especially with pitches that are down and away from him. Look out. They straighten him up. Three and one. Schmidt will be aggressive on this pitch. Well, if you've got mound visits, you might as well use them. This may be a talk from Gary Sanchez. Remember, Carlton's a rookie. He may be repeating the pitching coach's strategy. You don't have to give in here. There's two outs. You have an open base. in the inning and here again comes Bob Melvin. <laughs> when it's time for a change think speedy oil change and auto service your trusted oil change tune-up and smog experts. We'll be back. Be a rookie left hander, Ray Curry. You see what he's done in three games. He's been very good. Four strikeouts, two and a third. Hard thrower out of Hudson High School in Reno. And a fastball that's mid to high 90s, big curveball and a changeup. With you're hitting from the left side, you're going to see curveballs and fastballs. So here's Jock Peterson. And he takes a fastball high, 1 0. It's imperative for Kerr to get into the strike zone early. And Peterson probably knows that. Fall back. Yeah, he was laying in the bushes for him though in a 1 0 count. He got exactly what he was looking for. Peterson, two career walk off hits. The last time he did it against the Nationals back in 2021. Just Bono and Mano right there. Three pitches, three fastballs, and he just threw 96 right through him. And he still hadn't shown him his curveball. Pressure now is on Gary Sanchez to try and block that curveball because in a one-two count, good chance it's going in the dirt. If you're JD Davis at third base, you gotta think that ball's gonna get down there and be ready for it. One and two. Two and two. <laughs> the 
bases are loaded two balls two strikes. Got him. So the rook comes in Kerr does a good job. Giants however tied up. We're going extra innings. The numbers for Duvall his 33rd appearance on the year 199 ERA those are all star numbers 45 strikeouts in 31 and two thirds for Duvall he has been exceptional in save opportunities he's had 21 he's cashed in 19 times. So Sable who started out the bottom of the ninth by drawing a walk he goes into left field. Juan Soto will be the hitter the ghost runner will be Tatis. So the Padres get good speed on the base pass. So Soto's been walked. And that'll bring up Machado. Shot out two for eight lifetime against Duvall. Duvall will give you two types of fastball four seam and two seam, and a slider. Everything off a hard release. He comes at you. Foul back. 99 over the heart of the plate it's a ball and a strike. A two seam fastball in the slider two best bets to get a ball on the ground to get a double play. Chato's hit it to 12 on the year. One and two. And he just threw a 101 right by him. One thing Machado does however very well is it just with internet bats yeah, to does. speed you have to take advantage of that one two count I mean that was a pitch in the strike zone yep. and you're doing a guy like Machado a, a bit of a favor I mean he was on that pitch. That foul. It's a hundred mile an hour sink. And Machado just kind of top of the ball. Bogarts on deck. One and two. Let's play Bailey. Two balls, two strikes. Bailey had to really go hard to his right. It turned the mask around, and yanked the speaker out of his ear. Two and two. Foul back. Great pitch, and it's a great fight him off right there. And that's two strike perfection at 101. And Machado lives to see another day. Again, fighting off the fuzz. 
Just a, an emergency half swing. 99 through 101 consistently. He hasn't taken anything off, has he? No, he can't. It's a battle right here, boys and girls. The ball's only got one gear, and that's fifth. Two and two. At second is Tetis. Soto is at first. It's been fastball after fastball. Chano's definitely in the swing mode. I mean, it is an opportunity here to throw a slider off the plate about a foot. He may go hack at it. Well, we'll see what you got. Another 2 2 pitch. Does. Got him. And that's a strikeout he was pitching for, and he had to earn it. So a guy in the swing mode, he's going to go. And he couldn't quite get lumber on it. For a big strikeout for Duvall. Here's Bogarts. He likes that first pitch. Runs it up and in. 99 right above the hands inside corner just to introduce himself. Two and zero. Oh. He's got to get the strike zone here. Let's he doesn't do have a base to play with. Cronenworth on deck. Good fastball hitter. Two balls, no strikes. And he throws one in there to make it two and one. He like he was in the tape mode on that first strike yeah. the whole way. Yep. Set the clock. Foul back, two and two. He was on it. Yep. See a guy foul that ball straight back. He's got your time. And it was above the belt. And that's the easiest place to defend between the belt and the letters on your chest. Two and two to Bogarts. Now full count. A bit of an overthrow. Yeah, but not a bad idea to elevate there. Fish just weren't biting. On the ground. VR will get the out. Both runners advance. That kind of had trickiness written all over it when it left the bat. It had some weird spin on it, didn't it? So here's Cronenworth. And he's two for two lifetime against Doval. 
but they do have a base to play with here. One ball and no strikes. Good swing by Cronenworth to even the count. And you know he's thinking about one thing up there watching that swing and that's the fastball. <laughs> Driven to right. Side retired. Wow. It remains four to four. To the air for the Giants. The runner at second will be Jack Peterson. A couple of veterans talking it over. With Peterson at second base, guys are looking at average speed at best. So these two were teammates, right? With the In Dodgers. LA. I mean, you forget. Manny Machado played with the Dodgers. Yeah, played there for three months. So Kerr now will face Tyro Estrada, and it looks like they're going to walk Estrada. And the hitter will be Sable. So it's going to be up to a couple of left handed hitters. It's going to be Sable and then Yastrzemski. Yeah, There's an opportunity to butt here, and Sable is a good butter. Yeah, he showed us that with his first big league hit. Not a, not a lot of Giants hitters have any history at the big league level against Kerr. There's the bunt. Both advance. Great job. Big moment in the game for Mike Yastrzemski. This is back in the sixth inning in a 4 1 ball game with two outs. He puts one in the arcade. His ninth of the year. And this is a fly ball situation. The infield is all the way in. Wow, he rung him up for a ball. We got a clock violation on Kurt. Also, Jasminski got a look at the first pitch. Two balls and no strikes. He does have a base to play with, and you got a rook on deck. See if Yastrzemski gets something to hit here. He didn't like it, but it's a strike, two and one. Pitcher striking a 2 0 count, I and mean, that's perfection. Yastrzemski is questioning that location. Three and one. Peterson at third. Estrada at second. High drive. Right field. It is out of here. And we are going home.
Giants win their eighth in a row and another come from behind win. What a what a game. Did somebody let Mike Yashinsky know that all you needed was a sacrifice fly? And all he does is take the three one fastball challenge middle in and put it in the pond. A splash hit walk off. And Jack Peterson do it right off the bat. So the Giants walk it off in the tenth. And that's how this homestand and that's how this series gets started. I mean down four nothing in the ball game. And they do it with the long ball tonight. Something they haven't done for a while, but three home runs proved to be the difference too off the bat of Yastrzemski. You made a point about the pitch that got called late that Yastrzemski got to see for free 